In a very sad and surprising event, Muhammad Hassan, a 35-year-old man from Pakistan who worked as a helper, a porter, had a really tragic ending while he was helping mountain climbers on the tough journey to reach the top of K2, a big mountain. Hassan worked very hard for not much money, only 20 US dollars each day, and he did this for 50 really tough days. Sadly, he lost his life while he was going up the dangerous mountain. What's even sadder is that the climbers, who really wanted to reach the top of K2, had to walk over his body to get there. This makes us think about how hard and dangerous big challenges like this can be. And it also makes us wonder about what's right and wrong when people try to do something so tough. Hello, my name is Lisa, and welcome to the Lollipop TV Indifference, which means not caring, is a problem that doesn't have a solution. Just like that, something really sad happened. A person named Hassan died while trying to reach the top of two really tall mountains that are 8,000 meters high. After he died, his family was supposed to get money, but they only got 700 US dollars. What's even sadder is that the climbers who were with him didn't stop to help him. They just climbed right over his body and celebrated when they reached the top. Muhammad Hassan lived a tough life due to poverty and challenges. He stayed with his brother and worked as a porter to make a small amount of money. He joined a dangerous journey hoping to earn more. Sadly, the Pakistani company in charge of the trip didn't give him basic things he needed, like proper gear or equipment. He had to go up the dangerous mountain unprepared. It's still unclear how he lost his life, but it's a sad example of how some people's well-being can be ignored when they're not in the spotlight. While Muhammad Hassan was moving ahead on the dangerous path, something terrible happened that changed his life forever. We don't know if he slipped or the rope he was using became loose, but he fell a long way down. He held onto the rope desperately, and his things were scattered along his fall. He hung there for three painful hours, shouting for help. As time went on, his situation became even harder, both physically and emotionally. He tried hard to get someone to help him, but nobody came, showing how even the strongest efforts can feel lonely and vulnerable. Things got even worse for Muhammad Hassan when the climbers, determined to reach their goal, passed by him on their way up the dangerous mountain. His life was at risk, but they climbed right over him. This shows a sad difference between their determination and the real human cost that was ignored. It's a tough reality that sometimes people who work in the background face big sacrifices, while others focus on their own ambitions. Hassan's story is a sad reminder of these hidden sacrifices. People were upset with a mountain climber named Kristen Harilla from Norway. She didn't help when they reached the top and celebrated. Her team is being accused of not helping a porter who got hurt and later died while they were trying to climb the second tallest mountain in the world. But she says these accusations are not true. The situation involving Kristen Harila is undeniably troubling, as it's apparent that she chose not to provide assistance to Hassan in his time of need. Instead of offering help or expressing concern for his well-being, she focused on celebrating her own accomplishment. Her apparent disregard for Hassan's plight and subsequent silence regarding his tragic fate have sparked widespread outrage and disappointment among people around the globe. The sense of anger and frustration directed at her is a reflection of the collective sentiment that such callous behavior is unacceptable, especially in a context where teamwork, compassion, and a shared commitment to safety and support should prevail. The incident has ignited a broader conversation about the ethical responsibilities of adventurers and climbers, shedding light on the critical importance of valuing human lives over personal achievements. The company in Pakistan that sent Hassan to help didn't seem to think carefully. They knew he didn't have enough experience, training, or things he needed to stay safe while climbing K2, a very tough mountain. It's clear they knew he wasn't ready, but they cared more about making money than keeping him safe. This is really sad because they made a lot of money from the climbers, but they only gave Hassan a small amount of 20 US dollars per day, even though he worked hard for 50 days. This big difference between how much money they got and how little they cared about Hassan's safety shows that we really need to think about what's right and make sure people are safe, especially in situations like this where they could get hurt. Two climbers, Philip Fleming and Wilhelm Stendahl from Austria, shared pictures of people going past them on their way to the top. It's not clear where and when these pictures were taken, 
These climbers wanted to reach the summit too, but they had to stop because the weather got really bad and there were storms. Stendhal is also working on a film about his journey to K2. He used a small camera and a drone to film what happened the next day. He told the BBC that they found one person alive. This person was lying in a narrow area. Other people were walking over them and continuing with their trip. Sadly, no one came to rescue them. Stendhal said he was surprised and really sad. He even cried when he saw that people were just passing by and not helping. Fleming mentioned that only one person helped Hassan, and the others quickly moved ahead without helping him. The economic situation in Pakistan is really bad, and it's so tough that a guy named Hassan decided to go to K2, a dangerous mountain, even though it could be very risky. He didn't have much money, and he didn't even think about his wife and children's safety. He did all of this hard and risky work just to earn 20 US dollars each day. It's a sad example of how hard life can be for some people and how they have to make difficult choices just to try and get by. When you make it to the top of K2, which is one of the tallest and toughest mountains in the world, your body goes through big changes because of the extreme conditions up there. As you climb higher, the air gets thinner and there's not as much oxygen. This can make your body react in different ways. Your heart beats faster to send more blood and oxygen to important parts of your body, and you start breathing more quickly and deeply to make up for the lower oxygen. Also, your body might use more energy to keep working and stay warm. It also gets really cold on the top of K2, with freezing temperatures and strong winds. Your body tries to stay warm by making your blood vessels close to your skin get smaller, which can make your skin feel numb and increase the chances of getting frostbite. You might start shivering to create warmth too, which shows how tough it is to handle the cold up there. Reaching the K2 summit is not just about physical strength. Your mind plays a big role too. The hard work and the low oxygen can give you altitude sickness, which can give you a headache, make you feel sick and dizzy. Staying clear-headed and focused becomes super important as the lack of oxygen can make it harder to make good decisions and stay coordinated. In the end, Making it to the top of K2 means your body has to adjust a lot to deal with less oxygen, extreme cold, and all the challenges. It shows how tough and determined climbers need to be to take on one of the most difficult natural challenges in the world. Porter Hassan, unaware of this, tragically lost his life due to the severe weather conditions. It is imperative to establish clear regulations for climbing K2 in order to prevent tragic losses particularly in cases where profit-driven companies prioritize financial gains over the safety of individuals like innocent porters. Robust guidelines and standards should be enforced to ensure that climbers, companies, and expeditions adhere to ethical practices and prioritize the well-being of all participants. These regulations should encompass rigorous training and preparation requirements, stringent safety protocols, and equitable compensation for those involved. By imposing these measures, the mountain climbing community can work collectively to avert further heart-rending incidents and safeguard the lives of those who contribute to these challenging endeavors. It's really important for the climbers to give a generous amount of money to Hassan's family. He tragically lost his life, and it's even sadder that nobody helped him when he needed it. By giving money to his family, it can help them during this difficult time and show that people care about what happened to Hassan. It's like saying sorry for not being there to help. When someone loses their life, their family can feel very sad and worried, especially if they depended on that person to take care of them. So when climbers give money, it can make things a little easier for Hassan's family. It's a way to show kindness and support to them, and it's a way to remember Hassan and what he went through. K2 is considered one of the deadliest mountains due to its steep, challenging terrain, unpredictable and harsh weather. Susceptibility to avalanches, high altitude risks, remote location, and historical record of fatal expeditions. Climbers face technical difficulties, extreme cold, and thin air, making it a formidable and dangerous peak to summit. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.